This must be one of the most controversial lenses released this year. And depending on who you listen to, it's either an incredible lens which has amazing creative possibilities, or it's a lens to be avoided at all costs. And in my testing, I think it is quite an interesting option. This lens was sent out to me for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own, and this is not a paid or sponsored video. For the best pricing or any discounts I know about, there will be some links in the description down below. The first thing I wanna talk about is what this lens is. This is what's called a tilt lens. It's a 50 millimeter f1.4 tilt lens. And prior to the release of this lens, comparable lenses were somewhere around three to four times the cost. So the thing that this lens brings to the table is the ability to tilt, have this tilt functionality at a very, very low price point. And having the tilt functionality opens up a number of both creative and practical applications. Because when you tilt the lens itself, you actually change the plane of focus for the photo or video that you're creating. And here's a couple studio examples of how this works and what you get when you actually tilt the lens. Right now, I've just got the lens straight. We haven't engaged the tilt function at all, and we're at F2. And what you should see is the plane of focus is flat, like it would be with any normal lens. And the water bottle, the camera, and the bear are all reasonably in focus on a very similar plane. Now we haven't probably got that perfect, but they should be pretty close. Now what I'll do is I will turn the camera and at the same time I will slide this lens over to try to keep that camera in the middle of the frame. Now what we should see is that the water bottle is out of focus, the bear is out of focus, and the camera probably isn't even fully in focus across the whole thing because we have now shifted the plane of focus so it cuts through the center of that camera. And I can just punch in here and we'll have a look and see. Well, yeah, we don't even have the whole camera in focus. And if we want to get the whole camera in focus, we'd probably have to tilt this back a little bit and even a tiny bit more. This is like how much of a difference even a slight tilt can do. And if we pop back out, we'll see that both the bear and the water bottle are now completely out of focus, even though we have only just slightly tilted the lens. So that's one thing that I want you to know about these tilt lenses. You don't have to use the full extreme measure of the tilt to get this sort of result where we've got this sliver of focus in the middle. You get this incredible uh, creative result, even with a very minimal amount of movement. And if we just pop that back into the middle again, now, as you'll see, that wasn't a very big movement, really. We should now see that the camera is uh, pretty well in focus, as well as the bear and the water bottle should be reasonably on the same plane of focus. Here's another example of what it looks like when we shift the plane of focus. Now, you'll see on here, the lens is just barely off center. I mean, we have only just barely shifted the plane of focus. We're probably at around a third to 25% of the range of motion we've got to actually move this uh, plane of focus. And what I've done is I've lined the objects up roughly within the plane of focus. So the water bottle's in focus, the camera's in focus, and the bear in the background are all in focus. And that's made possible by this tiny little shift. So you can see that they're all, thereabouts are pretty close to being in focus. But if we take this and we just shift it back to its neutral position, now that wasn't much of a shift at all. What you'll see is now the bear has become quite out of focus. The water ball ha bottle has become quite out of focus. And we should see that the, that the camera is at least reasonably close to being in focus. There might have been a little bit of shift in moving the camera around there. But now we've got an object in front that's out of focus, an object that's behind that's out of focus, and the object in the middle is in focus. But just that little tiny bit of shift, and I don't know if I'll be able to match it up again, but yeah, just that little tiny bit of shift is enough to make quite a significant difference. And now we've got all the objects thereabouts or roughly in focus. So that's how a tilt lens works. But what is the practical application of a tilt lens? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is subject separation and subject isolation. Traditionally, if you wanted to blur out a, a background and have a person, say, in a portrait, maybe an animal, an object, and you wanted to draw the viewer's eye to the one thing that's in focus and throw everything else out of focus, to start with, you needed a lens that had a large maximum opening or a large maximum aperture. So the bigger the maximum aperture, the more blurry the background. Also, the longer the focal length number, the more blurry the background. But if you have a situation where you have a person in the center of frame and you have two people on either side of them, 
There's no way to create an image where that person in the center of frame is sharp and detailed in focus, and those two other people on either side of them are out of focus. That's because they're all standing in the same plane of focus. So they're all going to be in focus and the background is going to be blurry, but you don't have the ability to isolate one person in the middle of that frame because everybody is on the focal plane. By having a lens that tilts like this, you can actually tilt the plane of focus so that plane of focus hits that person in the middle of frame and they're sharp and in focus. But then on the person on the one side of the frame, it's actually behind them. So they're out of, out of focus in the foreground according to the, what the lens is doing. And the other person might be out of focus in the background. So by shifting the plane of focus, we can draw the viewer's eye and get subject separation or isolation even when we have subjects that are all on the same plane. This is not only great for portraits in busy environments or portraits where you have a person that you can't get much distance from the background that you want to blur them from, just shifting this plane of focus is going to be able to isolate them. But it also allows you to do things like uh, street shots where maybe you have somebody off in the distance and you really want to isolate them. You can shift this plane of focus and keep them in that sliver of focus. They will be sharp and detailed in focus and the things on either side will be out of focus. This really gives you the creative possibility to draw a viewer's eye to something with a shallow depth of field in a way that you absolutely can't do with a traditional lens. So this is a really, really cool creative use of a tilt lens like this. The other thing this often does for you or the look it gives you is what they call the miniature or toy miniature effect. And the reason you get this feeling that you're looking at objects that are very small or shrunken down like they're on a train board is because uh, the human eye and our brain is used to only seeing shallow depth of field, this level of shallow depth of field, on objects that are small and we're able to get the camera very, very close to, shooting models, what have you. By shifting this plane to focus, we create this incredible ability to blur out the objects nearby in a way that we can't do with a, with a traditional lens of full-size objects. That effect can only be achieved with a traditional lens with small objects on sort of a train board or a model. This gives us that look in real life with full-size full size objects. So therefore, it's really just tricking our brain into thinking those objects are much smaller than what they are. And this is what they call the toy miniature effect. For me, I think it's fun, but like once you use it a few times, it will probably feel a bit overused, and I don't think it's something that you would use a lot. I think it can be quite cool for time lapse, but it is one thing that you can do in a creative sense with a tilt lens like this. Probably the biggest practical application for a tilt lens like this is product photography. Now, generally when you're taking a picture of a product, you don't want some of the product to be in focus and part of the product to be out of focus. Generally speaking, you want the whole product, the whole depth of the product to be sharp and detailed and in focus. By having a tilt lens, which changes the plane of focus, it means that we can take a photograph of an object, not have to shoot it flat straight on like a traditional lens. We can actually shoot that product at an angle and tilt the lens to get the entire product in focus. And I've got a couple samples I'll just throw up on screen now. Uh, this first one is a piece of paper where I've written focus a number of times on this piece of paper. The one shot was taken when the lens was in completely flat mode, just as a normal lens. I think I took it at f2.8, and I focused on the middle focus that has the little targets on either side. And what you'll see is on either side of that, it quickly became out of focus. So you're really just seeing the, the one part. And if this was a big, long object like this, we would only have a very small amount of the object in focus. Then I tilted the lens, I kept it in the same position, and what you'll see is there's a much deeper depth of field. Even though we're still shooting at f2.8, we've changed the focal plane so it's more in line with the way that that object is, is sort of lying. Uh, in addition to that, I did this little photo of a Fuji camera here, and what you'll see is I focused on the lens cap or the body cap on this one, and if you look at the one that I took with the lens straight in the normal neutral position, you'll see that the word Fuji at the top is out of focus, and we're quickly getting out of focus as we go beyond that sort of body cap and before the body cap. Then when I tilt it, we have, once again, a much deeper depth of field, a lot more in focus. I was shooting this at f4, 
if I was doing a genuine product shoot, I'd probably be shooting it at f8, and I could get the whole thing in focus. So once again, this is a practical application, product photography, and a 50 millimeter lens is very, very popular for product photography. So I think this could actually be an excellent budget product photography option. And the final one that I would consider it useful for, but probably not my first choice, would be architecture and landscape for that same reason. You can be in a position, you can tilt the lens and create a situation where you've got the landscape that is going away from you. You're sort of up high looking down on a landscape. And by tilting the lens, you can get more of that landscape in focus because obviously you're not going to be able to get straight over top of it so the plane of focus is even with the ground by tilting it you sort of change that plane of focus so more of that ground is going to be in focus you have a deeper depth of field when you want to get the entire landscape in focus focus and the same thing with uh, architecture buildings what have you once again you've got a building that's going away from you you can tilt the lens and get more of that in focus once again, probably not my first choice for those things, but definitely a, a usable option for that type of thing. Just looking at the lens itself, this is an f1.4 lens, but I am going to talk about this lens like it's an f2 lens. So all the examples of what's happening, all the performance is going to be based on using this lens at f2. F and I will talk about that a little bit later in the video why I've done that. I will also say when you have the ability to tilt a lens and create this incredible shallow depth of field or sliver of focus, you don't always have to have f1.4 to achieve that. At f2.8, you get plenty of that effect and ability to isolate a subject. So using this lens at f2, you still get absolutely plenty of that subject isolation or ability to tilt that plane of focus. Now, looking at the lens itself, it's an all metal built lens. It comes with a nice slide on metal lens cap. It has a metal lens mount. And obviously the main feature is the ability of this lens to tilt and you can see it can tilt back and forth. And that feels really nice. It is a really nice smooth mechanism, surprisingly good for the price point. You also have the ability to turn the lens because you might want to tilt the lens left or right, but you also might want to turn it so you can tilt it up and down or any other angle. So you have the ability to turn the lens 360 degrees all the way around. You get nice satisfying clicks at each mark and it has the degrees there. And then you also have that uh, tilt functionality, which is the headline feature of the lens. And when you are spinning the lens or turning the lens, it's got this little locking mechanism so you can lock that in place. And the same thing with the tilt function, it has a really nice solid knob. And once you tilt that or crank that into place, it's not going anywhere. Now, this is a full frame lens. Of course, you can use it on APS-C cameras as well. So it's good for full frame and APS-C cameras. Just having a look at the distortion performance on the lens, there is a modest amount of barrel distortion, but nothing that's too extreme or anything that I would worry about. Looking at the vignette performance on the lens, it's, I find it quite good, particularly at F2, which is where we're talking about this lens. The one thing I will say is when you do use the shift function and you shift it over, you will get quite dark corners. Now, depending on what you're doing and what's in focus in the shot when you're doing this, this may or may not be an issue, but it is something to be aware of. You also do not have to shift this and use the full extreme shift to get the kind of effects you need. So if you are worried about the corners, you don't have to shift the lens to its extremes and bring on those slightly darkened corners, but just something to be aware of. Looking at chromatic aberration, once again, talking about this lens like an F2 lens, the chromatic aberration is quite well controlled and I think something that I wouldn't really worry about. It is a one click in Lightroom or whatever editing software if you want to clean that up. But in all the examples you've seen in the videos and the photos, I have not touched the chromatic aberration whatsoever. And following on from that, looking at longitudinal chromatic aberration, which is color fringing in the out of focus areas before and after the plane of focus. Once again, at F2, there is some to be seen, but not too much. And if you stop it down to F2.8, that cleans up really well. But overall, it's not something that I would really be concerned about. Looking at the flare performance on the lens, it's actually reasonably good. Once again, talking about F2, I don't think it's any better or worse than similar lenses at this price point. Looking at the minimum focus distance, this is really not a great close-up lens because you can't get very close to your subject. I can't recall exactly what the minimum focus distance is, but it's, it's definitely worse 
than a lot of lenses that I've tested and probably one of the worst as far as minimum focus distance goes for a standard lens. When it comes to bokeh and background blur, I was super happy with the background blur and the quality of the background blur coming out of this lens. I thought the bokeh balls were nice and round. Even when you stop the lens down, they actually stayed quite round. And that's important because I am shooting this lens at f2 most of the time, so we do have a slight stopping down effect. So you don't get those geometric shapes. You do get a quite round specular highlight in the out of focus areas. Looking at sharpness, this is the area and the reason that I say I'm treating this lens like an F2 lens. And if you look at the other reviews of this lens, people that are testing it at F1.4 and pixel peeping are rightly reporting that the image quality at F1.4 is not good. In fact, it's somewhere between disappointing and terrible. But the truth is, as soon as you stop it down to F2, pretty much across the board, everyone's opinion is, hey, it's quite good and it's completely usable. And at f2.8, it's nearly perfect. And I think the manufacturer of this lens has made quite a mistake with the lens. I think they should not have made it an f1.4 lens. And the reason that the opinion is so divided about this lens is because when you shoot at f1.4, which you expect you should be able to because it says it's an f1.4 lens, the image isn't good. But if you shot at f2 and this was only an f2 lens, people would be absolutely raving about this lens. And if you watch any other reviews on it, I would encourage you to look at this lens and look at what they say about this lens once it's at F2 or stop down from there. And what you'll find is all of a sudden the review is very, very positive. So I think this is a lens that for whatever reason, they could not achieve the maximum image quality at F1.4. They shouldn't have even tried and they should have made it an F2 lens. So if you are interested in this lens, you do need to know that it really is an F2 lens and beyond. But in the end, I have to ask, who is this lens for? And really, I think there's a couple of categories of people. First, it's for somebody who's looking for something different, interesting, and creative. They want something that looks completely unique, and they want to sort of shake up their photography and video game that they're doing right now. This is going to give you a completely different option, something that previously was at a price point that was at least three or four times the price of this, and it's just going to give you something really, really cool and some interesting images that you won't be able to achieve any other way. The other person I see it for is definitely product photographers on a budget. I could strongly recommend this for product photography. I do a fair bit of product photography, and I'm going to actually start using this for my product photography, particularly because when this lens is at f8, it is razor sharp, and that is where you shoot most of your product photography shots. They're around f8. So when I look at this as an f8 tilt lens, it is incredible value for money, and you could use this on sort of one product shot or one sort of product job and you would pay for the lens, you know, many, many times over. So I think it's a very cheap investment if you're on a budget and you're interested in product photography. Now, buying a new lens is only one way to improve the quality of your images. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. I think this is the best tutorial on photography that I've ever done. And I would be very surprised if you watched that video to the end and you weren't a better photographer at the end of it than you are right now.